Florian Marshall from the University of Western Australia. Thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV here at the Indo-Pacific Robotics Autonomy AI and Cyber Conference it's in Perth. It's good to be here. Wonderful. Now, uh, it's not often we get international speakers coming to Perth uh, speaking about robotics, particularly Dr. Uh, uh, Holly Yanko. Uh, but uh, your name keeps getting dropped throughout <laughs> the last two days at the conference. Uh, so very interested to know what you've been studying. But you did work with uh, Dr. Yanko. Yes, uh, but I did Tell us all about it. Yeah, so I actually started off working as a student engineer at the Binar Space Program. Wow. Um, so I started doing back in my undergrad, actually, my first year. Well, we'll give I, Curtin University a quick plug then. Yeah, yeah, Curtin University. They were great. It's an amazing team. Um, it's really, really strong um, in terms of like the team dynamic. And also we get to do really cool research on a very small scale so we use custom manufactured parks and it means we get to compress everything down into a much smaller space uh, which means you can do so much more with a 1D CubeSat yep. than you can usually. Uh, so yeah I worked there, I did mechatronics work for them um, and worked on the assembly team uh, and actually helped start up some of the high school payload program where we can let high school students design wow. their own stuff to go to space. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, and then after working that team, someone from our review board, Mark Masiri, uh, actually uh, brought me on as a intern in the Fugo Spark uh, Trailblazer mission, where Wonderful. we were one of the teams bidding to design a lunar rover um, to go explore the lunar south yeah. pole and do some really cool science on the moon. Um, so I was really lucky to work on their mechanical engineering team. Um, I specifically worked on the deployable arm. Um, so how can we make an articulated arm wow. to help us collect samples on the moon? Um, and that was really cool. Uh, and then after that, of course, I hadn't had enough of robotics. So uh, Mark Siri actually introduced me to his old PhD supervisor all the way over in the States. Uh, so I actually, over at the start of year, flew over for four months and just did a extended research oh, stay. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was In Boston? Yeah, in Boston, yeah, Massachusetts. Nice. So that was at the Nerve Center, which works uh, yes. out of UMass Lowell. Um, and so they were started out of a lab at MIT. They work with Boston Dynamics. It's a really cool robots experimental like validation and testing facility. Uh, and I actually worked as a computer scientist. Over wow. There, so not my background at all, but uh, working to see how we can use augmented reality and virtual reality to understand the errors that happen in robots and how we can uh, use that to assist us in diagnosing those in human robot interaction. That's an amazing, uh, I, I'm scared to ask ages <laughs> here, but you're doing your master's at the yeah, moment, right? Yeah, I'm 21. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't know. But that's an amazing set of experiences there from from the Binar Satellites yeah. CubeSat program through to working with the on the Trailblazer project, and then going out here to Boston working with people like Dr. Yanko. And uh, shout out to Mark and Siri for giving you that opportunity. Yes, yeah. Uh, what's your? This is a wonderful sort of a STEM uh, and women in STEM. Yeah. You're a great example. What's your career progression? I can't even imagine the antecedents <laughs> on a resume is looking like. Uh, what, what's your long-term goal at 21, having that type of experience? Well, I figured out pretty early on, and a little bit unfortunately, that I am a sucker for space and a sucker for robotics. So I th almost think it's a little bit bad because I found what I love so early on. Um, I love that when you work in the space industry, every single assumption you've used that you could typically use when you have historical cases where you can make a pretty similar design and use it to inform things that people have already done. You don't have that. You yeah. don't have the case studies. Um, and everything really gets turned on its head. So I really love the element of space and I love that with robotics, you're not just a mechanical engineer. You're working this really highly dynamic team in a really, really extreme environment. Um, and so you get to have fun with all the fidgety bits that no one else really cares about. Um, so I know that I want to continue in that. I uh, think I want to go do research first, but I do see myself going into industry after a while. Um, I'm not quite sure y where yet, but somewhere that's frontier and exciting. Wow. Um, and hopefully can keep bringing those two industries together for me. Uh, message to young girls, what was the trigger that got you sparked? Uh, and what were you studying at school? Yeah, so back in high school, I actually had a math teacher in year eight um, who sat me down and said, look, uh, I know you, I don't know if you've considered it yet, but you are really incredible at math. And no one had ever told me that before, um, because I struggle with mental math. I'm not so great with my times tables, but I love complex patterns. Um, and I love connecting that together and doing like fun little algorithms and stuff like that. Uh, and so he sat me there and he said, I see you being in my special, uh, in my math specialist ATAR class, which is the highest one you can do in high school. Um, and that really inspired me. And he told me to go on space camp. And I went there and yeah. I went um, to Alabama to the US Space and Rocket Center. Right. Um, and I got to have hands on like simulated missions. At what age? Uh, I would have been 13 at the time. Wow. Um, so year. 10, I believe, um, and that was really incredible. Uh, and I'd always been really into science. I thought I was going to be a paleontologist when I was five because I loved dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> 
yeah, so I always had that love for STEM and I really found that exciting stuff that's new that people don't get to see um, and I love sci-fi so well look less than a, de a decade from that from that trigger I suppose it's an amazing story I think uh, we just interviewed Catherine Bennell Pegg yesterday oh, wow. uh, and seeing at the International Astronautical Congress the open day on Friday in fact there's some kids here even uh, yeah. this session but the open day and just seeing what a 13 year old can be how they can be inspired yeah here we are at, uh, just eight years later I'm doing the maths there you go <laughs> for 21 uh, with that type of experience look Lauren uh, like I said your name was getting bandied around in that room the last two days I can't believe you're only 21 <laughs> Uh, you really want to watch, so I'm really glad to capture you very early yeah. in your career on Australia in Space TV. Thank you so much for coming to IPRAC, and uh, hopefully we'll have you as a speaker into the future. I hope so. Thanks Thank for you joining so much. us.